What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodeMe.com and in this video, we're going to build a tic-tac-toe game for PyQt5 and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to build this fun little tic-tac-toe game. So pretty simple, but a couple of fun little things that should be interesting. So head back over to Recode. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code for this video in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other PyQt5 videos in this series. So check that out if you haven't seen it so far. So I've got just our basic PyQt5 starter code that we always have. I'm calling this toe.py. And the first thing we want to do is build out our GUI. So let's head over to the terminal and I'm in my C PyQt5 directory. I've got my virtual environment turned on and let's just run the designer. And we just want a main window. So let me go ahead and create that. Let's resize this real quick. So we can make this any size we want, but I'm just going to go ahead and make it, I don't know, 400 by 500, something like that. Now, Tic-tac-toe is basically a big grid. So I'm going to use the grid layout. I don't think we've actually used this before. So this is actually really kind of interesting. So let's put this on here and kind of just resize it a little bit here and maybe move it around a bit, something like that. Now check this out. We want essentially nine buttons here. So I'm going to come down here and grab a button and I'm just going to put it in there. And when I drop it, you notice it sort of resizes and pulls it all the way across. So we want nine of these guys. So I'm just going to pull nine of them in. So now we've got our first column of three. I'm going to drag this over to the side. And when I do, boom, it pops it into a little grid thing, right? So I'm just going to come through here and very quickly knock these out. And then for the last one, same thing, highlight this side. You can see it's sort of bluish and boom, it pops right in there. So really super fast and easy way to do this. So, okay, that looks good. Now we want to resize all these buttons. So I'm going to hold down my control button on my keyboard and select all of them so that we could do them all at once. And we could just come through here and decide what we want. So here we can set the size policy. First, I want to stretch these to 100 by 100. And this will make sure that when I, we click the buttons and they change from X to O to nothing, the buttons won't resize. And then next we want to come down here to minimum size. And let's make these each 100 by 100. And when we do, boom, they resize. So that's cool. Now let's see, let me click on the grid thing itself and let's come up here and let's play around with this horizontal spacing. I'm going to set that to one. You can see the buttons kind of smush together a little bit more. Maybe set that to one. Okay. So that's looking good. Now we can take this and we can kind of resize it to whatever we want. And I want these to be a little bit more scrunched together. So I'll just put it kind of like that. So, okay, that looks good. Now let me highlight all these buttons again and let me double click on one of them and change it just to X. Now let's change the font of this X. So let's come over here and scroll down to our font. And what do you think? Like 48 or something nice and big, something like that. That looks good. And again, I'm going to double click one and just backspace because I don't actually want anything in there by default. And okay. We've got our buttons. So quick and easy way to do that. Now we also need a reset button. So let's come down here and grab that. And let's stick this down here somewhere. Kind of resize this and let's say start over something like that. And again here, let's resize this to like 16, make it nice and big. That looks pretty good. And finally, we want a label in here that tells us, you know, whose turn it is or who won or who lost or whatever, some little message we want to put on the screen. So we're going to need a label for that. So let me just grab a label kind of stick this in the middle somewhere, something like that. And let's for now, let's just say X goes first, something like that. And I want to make this bigger so we can come over here and let's say make it 16. And let's go ahead and center this. So if we come down here, somewhere around here, yeah, horizontal, we can change it to H center, pop it right in the middle. Okay, so that's pretty much all there is to it. That looks pretty good for like working on this for two minutes. So let's come up here and file save as, and I want to be in my C PyQt5 directory. And let me call this toe.ui. So now we can head back over to our sublime text and let's open that file just to see what's in there. So that is toe.ui. And you can see we've got a bunch of stuff here. So we've got push buttons. Ooh, and actually, one thing I do want to do back in the designer, click on this first button and you'll notice the number is push button. If we click on the next one below, it is push button underscore two. So I want to keep the same naming convention. So I'm going to call this push button underscore one. So now this is one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, and nine. And this guy down here is 10. And that looks good. So let's go ahead and save this again. And maybe come back here and reload this. Don't really need to, but might as well. So okay, now let's head back over to our code. Now we need to import all of the widgets that we're going to be using. Now we're going to be using a Q push button widget and a Q label widget. And I've already got those imported. So we're good to go there. Now we just need to define all of our widgets. And you can see I've already got two of them here. And we need actually 10 buttons and a label. And I've already got the label defined as well self dot label. It's a Q label, it's called label. And you notice here's our push button underscore one, the thing that I renamed, we need eight more of those. So I'm just gonna one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let me just come through here and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And actually, we need a 10th one too for that reset button. Okay, so now those are all defined. So now what do we want to do when we click one of these buttons? Well, this is usually what we do, we call self dot clicker, or whatever, and then we create a clicker function. But this time, I'm going to do it a little bit different. I'm going to go lambda self dot clicker, and then I'm going to pass in the actual button itself. Oh, we actually need to change the names of the buttons here too. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, getting ahead of myself there 10. Okay, so we've got our nine buttons or 10 buttons, actually. And they're all defined. But like I said, whenever we click this guy, we want to run the clicker function, which we haven't created yet. And we want to pass in the button. And I'll show you why we want to do that in just a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. And let's make nine more of these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And again, same thing here, we just want to pass in the buttons themselves. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And same thing over here, we want to change the names of these. Eight, nine, 10. Okay, so okay. Okay, so far, so good. So now we need this clicker function, right? So let's come up here, or come down here or wherever we want to do this. And let's say click the buttons. So let's go define a clicker, we want to pass in self. And we also want to pass in something else. Let's call it B. What is B? Well, B is this thing right here that we passed in the button itself. So when you click button one, we're passing in button one. Why are we doing that? Because we want to change something on the button. So what do we want to change the text, right? So when somebody clicks on one of the buttons, we want either an X or an O to appear, right? We can do that since we now passed in B. So we can just go B dot set text, and then set it to anything we want. So if I say X, we can do that. Now, whenever we click a button, we only want it to be able to be clicked once we want it to be disabled after that. So we can go B dot set enabled equals false. Right? So okay, let's go ahead and run this and see if this works. What we have now is when we click a button, it just X will appear on it and then the button will be disabled. So let's head back over to our terminal and run this guy. But before we do that, if you like this video, and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codingme.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, in a commercial, let's run this guy. So Python toe.py. And when we do, we get our app. And when we click on a thing, uh oh, clicker. Did I misspell clicker? Nah, I put this inside of here. Man, what's what in the world is going on? This should be outside. So there we go. Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> All right, let's run this guy again. Should work now. And boom, X, you notice it's also sort of grayed out. Very cool. And you also notice some of these are changing colors. I'm not really sure what's going on there. We'll have to play with that. Let's run this guy again and see if it does it second time. No, weird. I don't know what that was. We'll look into that later. But okay, for now, this seems to be working, we can click these buttons and x appears. So that's great, I guess. But uh, we probably don't want just x or o. So before we do that, let's knock out this start over button, just so we can reset this thing. So let's head back over here and this last button button 10, instead of running this, we can just do it the old way we usually do and call self dot reset. Right? So now let's 
create a reset function real quick. Let's say start over. And in here, we're going to define reset. We want to pass in self. So what do we want to do? Well, we need to set the text for each of our buttons back to nothing, and we need to enable them. Now they're disabled. So let me just create a list called button list. And this is going to be a Python list. And we just want self dot button one. And this is just gonna be a list of all of our buttons, right? So let's go button one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Looks good. And let's just go through here. I think this is probably gonna be an easier way to do it. Update them all at once with a for loop instead of doing them each separately. So let's do a for loop. Let's go for B in button underscore list. What do we wanna do? Well, we wanna go B dot set text to nothing. And we need to enable the button. So let's go B dot set enabled to true. Okay, that should work. Let's go ahead and save this and run it and see if that worked. Python toe.py. And we can click some things. And then when we click start over, boom, it clears everything up. Okay, that looks good. All right, so now we've got all of these buttons and all they're doing is X's. Obviously, that's not what we want. We want to alternate between X and O. So how can we do that? Well, pretty simple. Up here at the top, let's just sort of define a counter to keep track of whose turn it is. Okay, and we can call this anything. So self dot counter, and let's set it equal to zero when the game starts. So now down here in our clicker function, all we need to do is determine whether this counter is odd or even. And if it's even, let's say that means it's X's turn. If it's odd, that means it's O's turn. It's an easy way to keep track. So we can just go if self dot counter, and then we can use our modulus two equals zero. And remember modulus returns the remainder of a division. So we're taking the counter divided by two. And hey, if there's anything left over, that means it's an odd number. You know, if there's not anything left over, if it's zero, that means it's an even number. So if it's an even number, it's X's turn. If it's an odd number, it's, you know, O's turn. So let's create a variable and let's call it, I don't know, mark, <laughs> we're creating a mark. And we'll set that equal to X if this is even, right? Else we can say mark equals zero or O, right? Now here, when we're setting the text, instead of passing in X or O, we can just pass in mark. Right, so that should do the trick there. Go ahead and save this and run it and see. So X, uh, X, uh-oh. You know what we forgot to do? Increment the counter. Man, all the mistakes today. I need a vacation, right? So let's come down here. And after all this is done, let's uh, increment the counter. So let's go self.counter plus equals one. So every time we click a button, this will increment the counter. And that should work. So let's go ahead and save this. Run this guy one more time. And we get X, O, X, O, X, O. Very cool. So now we can do this and this is cool, but maybe we want to change this label every time we click to say whose turn it is next, right? We can do that. Just each time we click the button, we can go self.label.setText. And if X just went, we just marked it as X, then it's O's turn. So we can go O's turn, something like that. And we could just copy this and do the same thing here and just change it to X's turn. So that looks good. Let's go ahead and save this and run it. So X goes first, boom. Now it's O's turn, boom. Now it's X's turn. Now it's O's turn. And that seems to work. So now when we click start over, it still says X's turn here. So when we click this button, we want to reset this label too. So let's go ahead and change that real quick. Super easy. Let me just copy this and go to our reset button. And down here, let's say reset the label. And we can say X goes first. And here, let's say reset the buttons. And here, let's say create a list of all our buttons. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this, run it one more time, see if that worked. So we can click some things. Now when we click this, boom, it says X goes first. All right. Uh oh. You know what? Now it's O's turn when we start over and click this. X is supposed to go first. 
So we also need to change the counter when we hit the reset button. So let's go reset the counter and let's go self.counter equals zero. So start the game at zero. So, okay, let's make sure that worked. So X goes first, now it's O's turn. Let's start over, boom, X goes first. All right, that seems to work. So now the only thing we need to do is figure out the logic of, look, we've got you know three O's in a row here. That means O has one. How do we do that? And I think this video is getting a little bit long. We'll tackle that because it's a little bit bigger of a project. And we'll look at that in the next video. So pretty easy to get the basics of our tic-tac-toe game, right? That grid layout thing was very helpful with, with the PyQt5 designer. So that's something we don't think we've looked at before. So very cool there. And it's just a matter of passing in the buttons themselves when we click them, and then we can then update their text very easily with just a couple of lines of code and uh, not much more to it. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codeme.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership. Save pages $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codeme.com, and I'll see you in the next video.